sign two time for the cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha gang. Rockin' with the best, cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha gang. Uh, I like it now, cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha gang. Watch my bro, the cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and members of the cha cha nation. Welcome to another episode of the cha cha spotlight series which is now being brought to you by Absolute Art Media in collaboration with Homeboys Inc. Homeboys Inc. is an A&R firm in the United States. They're into artist management, music distribution, and lots more. And my name is Afis Tonova, a.k.a. your musical plug, creator of the Energy Force. And I'm here with another talented artist. I without wasting much of your time, let me allow him to introduce himself. My name is Kenaji Odogwa. I'm an artist, hip-hop artist, rapper, and songwriter. And I'm here with Afis Tonova. I'm doing good. I'm doing absolutely great. I'm excited Thank to be here. Thank you for being here. All right. So uh, without yeah. wasting much of time, let's, you know, let's dive into it. Tell us, how did you come up with yeah. the name Bernard J? I mean, what inspired you behind that name? Is that your real name or something? Yeah, it's um the two of them, they are from my um my real names exactly. My my government name actually is um Jude Okena Ugwai. So okay. Kenna came from my Igbo name Okenna. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. So it came from my my Igbo name Okenna. So I caught out. I just I I like people calling me more by Okenna. So I just I don't really like people calling me by Jude. It's more of a, it doesn't seem I don't know to me it doesn't seem special or something. So I like that name Okenna. So that's why I brought out Kenna from it. Then Jude I turned it to J because people usually call me J J J and all those in schools. My friends and all those. So I just brought out the two name and put it as Kenaji. What about the Odogu? Odogu yeah, the Odogu is more of like a an alter ego. Okay. Yeah, it's more of like a like a like a I don't know how to explain it. It's more of like more of like a, 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 another version of me. Yeah, guys. Okay. It's more like the I don't know how to explain. It just came to me like it's the inner version, it's the Igbo version of me, like it's the the braggy side of me. Kenaji is is naturally me. Kenaji is me. I don't know if I, you understand me. Kenaji is me. But Odogu is, is that darker side, that uh, that uh, that version oh, that, that just is like the, oh, that, that comes. Yeah, yeah. Is the is the is the that Igbo spirit in me that enters, that does things that you know that I'll look like ah, who is this guy? You know that kind of thing. But Kenaji is naturally me. I'm Kenaji naturally. But people, but generally people refer to me as Odogu and Odogu is a common thing. My mom likes to call me Odogu most of the time. And uh, most people like to call me Odogo all the time, but naturally, as an artist, I'm Kenaji. Uh, all right. So um, tell us, how did you start uh, music? When did music start for you? Um, music has actually been a thing for me right from time, right since I was like, since I was a kid, I've always liked to be creative. You know, I've always liked to uh, do things differently, do things in a way that, uh, like, I see things. I see how things are happening. I just like to do it in a different kind of way, right? Sometimes, right? Since I was a kid. And um, I fell in love with music because I like to listen. Right back then in school, in junior school, I like to listen to a lot of Lil Wayne. You know, I, I really liked Lil Wayne right time back then. And one thing that now made me like him more was this song he did, Lollipop. I like okay. that song so much that I actually remixed the song. I think that was the first time I remixed a song. And when I remixed the song, I, I um, I performed it to a few of my friends back then. It was in church. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Was, I was remixing the song on a Saturday. Then the next day on church, after service, when we we're playing around the, uh, the church premises, I was performing the song to a few of my friends. They were like, "Wow, it's nice. They really like the song." And so that really gave me a vibe. Like, ah, I think I like music. And then from there, I. From there on, I started like to writing songs. I started writing the songs that I, well, I, I never expected that I would actually do anything with it. I was just doing it for fun. It was right from then till after high school, after secondary school, after I even entered university. It was until I came to this school to oh, you that's when I actually took music seriously. Um, when I saw that there was actually like avenue to to be heard and to be listened to and to actually be appreciated. For doing music, that's when I like. I started taking music seriously, and um, at first it was just online, just me doing covers and freestyles on Instagram, Twitter, and all those, and posting it, and people appreciating it. So I guess it was because I was here, 
and, and people were seeing me posting stuff online. They were like, guy, you need to do a song. Guy, you need to do a song. There were people kept on telling me that you can't keep on doing short, short videos on Instagram and all that, that. We need a song. So with the demand of people saying, give us a song, give us a song, I was like, probably maybe I should actually take this to sales and actually do a song and give people. And so that was when I did my first song. And then from then on, it started off like that. Then. All right. So um, from what you said now, you know, you took music seriously when you actually got into the university. university that was when yes, yes. They said that that was when you decided that, okay, this music thing is what I want to do. Is what I want to do, yeah. Okay, yeah. so now, yes. um, when was the first time you recorded your first song? And how did it feel, you know, actually being in the studio and recording your own first song, not cover, your personal song? Not cover, okay. Experience? Yes, I, it was around 2019. Okay. Around 2019. That was when I actually went to the studio. That okay. was the first time I entered the studio to even record because anything I did before then was on laptop, on phone, in my room. I was I'll just record a bunch of things, do it myself, mix it myself, and then post it up on Instagram. But the first time my friends actually took me to the studio was in 2019. That's when I recorded my first official single, okay. and uh, it was for sure. And I the first time I entered there, I was feeling a little bit nervous because. I'm not usually, you know, recording in people's presence. And it's just, and I had to stand in front of a mic. That's the first time I stand in front of a standing mic. And then people were like behind me watching me, seeing what's, what's he going to say and all those kind of things. So I was feeling a little bit jumpy, but thank God for the producer. It was, he told me to calm down. I did the first verse, I did it like twice before he told me to calm down and actually go through it slowly. Then, and then it came natural, it just came natural to me. Okay, so that was, um, that was there's, been, there's always been, um, you know, a lot of debate that um, singers, you know, has they have it much more easier than rappers in industry. Yeah, so rappers. you, being, being a rapper, what would you say has been your biggest challenges so far? My own biggest challenge so far hasn't been any other thing except myself. Okay. Because I, I'm not the type that I really um, get pressured to do things that people want. Okay. I do things that I feel like people will want. Okay. I do things that I feel like, I look at myself today, and then the next day, I look at what I was previously, and then I try to say, like, I try to make myself a competition. I try to make sure that I am better than how I was before. Okay. Because I know that if I can please myself, I may not be able to please a number of people, a lot number of people, but if I can please myself to an extent, then that I have that satisfaction. Then I can I can now start looking at what people want to actually get from me. But I've I've already pleased myself in the first instance, so it's not really much of a pressure. Again, so it's just more of like, okay, this is what you want. Okay, this is what you want to hear. Okay, I get it. I get. It. I'll see what I can do. Now, when it comes to rapping, is um as there's as far as the, as far as there's something about hip hop that that comes naturally. If you have it, you have it. If you, if it's something, if it's inbuilt in you, you already have it. So it's not something that you have to actually like really force, unless it is being forced on you. It's not that just come naturally because you. It is more of like um, it's it's more of like poetry. It's more of like something so sort of, It's more like something that comes in. I I write songs. I write a lot. I write songs too. That's. I um, I write songs that I was even thinking I was I was you know, I, I've never mentioned this before. But I wasn't really interested in actually doing music. I was interested in writing songs, correcting okay. music, and being a critic and all those. It was when I started rapping that I knew that actually I want to do music. I wanted to just write songs, do covers, and maybe write songs for big artists and give it to them. Let them you know you know perform the song, but I think it was the, people don't know this, but my first song wasn't actually for me. Okay, that was interesting. It wasn't for me. My first song wasn't actually for me. I wrote this song. There was this uh, record label that was um, looking for songwriters. Like okay. I wrote this song and I, I was like, I, I like what I wrote. I wrote the song. I did a little voice tape of the song with the lyrics. I submitted it to them, but they didn't like it. Okay. They didn't, I don't know, they didn't really feel it, I guess, or something, but they didn't really get back to me. So it was during that time when I saw, I got in contact with my friends here and they just convinced me that I should just, you know, I just felt like, well, 
if nobody will listen to this, let me record it and listen to it myself. So as I recorded it and listened to it myself, it was good. And people I played before, they liked it. And that's why I decided that maybe I should start writing, I should start producing, I should start, you know, recording the songs that I've written. And so it started like that. So it wasn't as, it hasn't really been a challenge to be a rapper like that. It hasn't really been a challenge because it's just natural. It just comes from within. If I hear, if I hear a beat and I want to moderate, I'll moderate. It's as simple as that. So um, let's talk about you know um, your parents because you rightly mentioned that your mom likes calling you Dogo. So I you know I'm kind of yeah. assuming that you and your mom you are very cool and tight and all that. So the question yeah, is, yeah. do they know that that you are doing music? And if they know, what was that reaction when you told them that mommy I've started doing music? My mom knows, and um, my mom is completely cool with it. She likes it a lot. I mean, most lots of my songs, she likes it. See, this very there is a particular cover, cover of a song that I remixed, a false song like this. To this very day, that song is still a ringtone on her phone. So my wow, mom is cool with it. it. Very, very cool with it. And each time I hear her phone ring and I hear my voice coming on it, I'm always so, you know, I'm always happy. At least with any other challenge I face, I know that there are people that are still actually like my mom still supports me she still likes it she she no matter what happens she's still with me 100 percent but on my dad aspect i'm not really that close with my dad per se okay. so it's kind of a family family private issue i'm not really that close with him so he doesn't really know what i do in okay. school he doesn't really know that much about me he doesn't really know that much about even any of any one of my brothers and sisters, well, no, it's not that it's not something that I actually talk about him, talk to with him. He doesn't really know that much. I don't even think if he will even understand uh, what it means, what this music or thing means to me. I don't, I don't think he would know like the the value of it, of how it means to me that much. But with my mom, she's completely cool with it. African stand up. Your Saturday just got more exciting as Afisto Novo, aka your musical plug, creator of the energy, presents to you Cha Cha Music Review Podcast. A music review podcast that critic, review, analyze, and rate new songs from top African artists on a weekly basis. Whether you're from Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Bini, Lesotho, Botswana, Rwanda, or even in the diaspora, Chacha Music Review Podcast is your guide for the newest African sounds. Chacha Music Review Podcast by Afis Nova, amplifying the African sound by bringing the best of African music to your ears. Let's talk about um, stage performance. Have you ever been on the stage okay. before? How was it, you know, being on the stage for the first time and actually performing your song in front of a crowd or in front of an audience? I've been on stage lots of times. I could be on stage lots of times. Now, and uh, it's, a, it's a funny thing to say, but I remember the first time that I climbed on stage, I was extremely nervous too. Now, I don't tell this to most people, but to this very day, I'm still nervous if I climb on stage. Wow. I've been on multiple stage but to this very day, I'm still nervous because I'm nervous because I I feel like if I'm not nervous, that means that means I'm not sure if if if, if I'm not I'm not being real because I know this is something that is actually happening for real. You understand me? It's something that's actually happening for real. So, but it's just it's not like how it was the first time. First time I was really really nervous, but immediately I stepped on the stage and I grabbed the mic and when my song started playing, I started performing. All the nervousness just disappears. Just like, and it's and it's what still happens now. If I go on a different stage, maybe on a different location, and then I'm like, okay, next up, can I do immediately? The, maybe the MC or something mentions my name. My heart skips a bit for like a few seconds. But once I step on stage and I grab the mic, the nervousness just just goes. I guess can I just nervous? Yes, but Odogu is never nervous. <laughs> Odogu is never nervous. Odogu is no, it doesn't really fear anything. But I, I guess that's why Odogu just came out of nowhere. Odogu, Odogu is something that even just came like 2020, was it 20 or 2019? Around that time, sure. Well, to this very day, can I just is the calm and collected person, but Odogu is not calm at all. Odogu okay. is not calm at all. That's the thing. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, you know what inspires you uh, you know as an artist. What 
because uh, you know being 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 a rapper the way you kind of write songs is different from how a normal singer's write song so how yeah. what inspires you to write your rap yes um in rapping when it comes to hip hop in rapping you you tell much more story than in singing Mm -hmm. Okay, you understand. So that's why there's a difference between hip hop and just normal songs. In rapping, you have to, you have, you have an ability to tell much more story. You have an ability to be like different. You have to be, you can be so versatile when it comes to hip hop. So when I get to write a new song, the inspiration usually can come from anywhere. It can usually come from an event. It can come from just within. So most of the time, it's um, it comes from. Anything it could be anything that could have happened in the past, or anything that can happen in the future, or it could be anything that could uh, maybe around what's happening right now. I could just be around here right now, and I could be like, um, I could look at things and I could see that this is what's going on right now, and then it could just that particular image that's formed in my head. It can be a particular line, it can be a verse, or it can be the entire song. But there is avenue to like go for that. Is avenue to stay and just you know be limited to what you see and then write a song about it. Or you can go out, think outside of the box, and then, you know, write about it. But that's rap about you. You, you know, you, there, there are rules in rap. It has to, like, it has to follow that rules. It has to rhyme. It has to have flow. It has to have delivery. It has to have uh, metaphors, punchlines, and all those. So that's the thing about it. In singing, you could just do ad libs and all those, and, you know, just, basically just put vocals, and that's all. But in rap, it's, you have to like follow those uh, rules, those uh, you know the norms of how rap is supposed to be. Sure. That's it. Yeah. All right. So um, you've already mentioned that um, Lil Wayne had a big influence, you know, in your rapping and how yeah. much you love rap and all that. But let's leave uh, yeah. the foreign side a little bit and let's come down to the Nigerian side or Africa in general. Uh, just mention okay. three rappers in Africa. Feel like they inspire in you and you look up to. Um, Number one in Africa, that would be Sakodi. Okay. Mostly Sakodi is like, it's one big African influence that I look up to in Africa. That's Sakodi. Okay. Number two, Iblis. In Nigeria, yeah, it's Iblis. Iblis. Okay, that's Ibo Boy. Yeah, Ibo Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, normal people, when I when people ask me what was the, because as an Igbo rapper, they ask you who is the artist I look up to in Nigeria that is Igbo. They expect me to say something like Fino or... Or you can choke or something, but I like Fino big time. I like Fino a lot. But when, what influences me? What what makes what what I call from? What I look at when I'm trying to like make a song is people like Iblis or Zoro. I like the way they I like the way they write their songs. I like the way they move. I like everything, and that's what influences me. That's in the African scene here. Yeah. Uh, who else again? Olamide is a big influence, of course. Because okay. the big influence he. Uh, but in, in general, what I can say, I can look at if I want to write another. Because in writing, in making, in making yourself an artist, you have to look up to the big ones. They know what you can, you know, call from them to okay. make yourself. So I get when it comes to who I can call from in in the Yoruba scene, it's actually Reminis. I like Reminis a lot. Not really on Lamy days, Reminis. So that's the that's the thing. Okay. Um, in South Africa. That would be AKA and AKA and What else? I like the fact that um, you know, your range of rappers across Africa are wide. I mean, you went to Ghana to mm. Big Sakodi, you came to Nigeria, yeah, Saturday. Olamide, Il Blaze, Germany's South Africa, you talk about AKA and C. So that's yeah. that was really, really it, those are amazing yeah. rappers that and any artist can you know drop influence and yeah yes yes all right yes, so um yes. let's let's leave the music thing aside let's leave Odogu aside for a little bit and okay let's, let's let's get to know more about you know Kenaji. you said you're in um Alabison Obama University right yeah yeah Alabison Obama University what level are you on uh, what course are you studying I'm currently in 400 level and um, mass comp I'm doing mass comp Okay. Okay. So, yeah. um, um, tell us, what's your, you know, best food? One particular food that I guess really I can call it best food is um, 
cooked, boiled yam and boiled plantain together with egg sauce. And that was simply because there was a time I was sick in school and my sister, my other sister cooked that for me and it tasted so good. I, I, I always tell her that I need, I need her to do that kind of food again. I think that's from, from then on, it became my best food. This is a recent stuff. For a long time, I didn't have anything like a best food. I usually just eat things that I like and then it goes like that. But I think for a best food, that would be my best food. Boiled yam okay. and boiled plantain with egg sauce. Okay, so are you um, a movie person or a sports person? I used to be a sports person, but of recent I've become a movie person. I guess maybe it's because of you know growing up and changing and all of that. But when I was younger, I used to be a sports person, a huge sports person. I like sports, especially any physical sports that I, you know that includes jumping around, that kind of things. I was a very playful person back when I was young. So I guess I'm still a playful person, but much more conservative, sure. Yeah. All right, so um, let's get back into it and let's bring the Odogo house. I want uh, you know, my audience to feel the talent that you have. So I'm going to give you some few seconds to do you know, a little bit of freestyle for them and let okay. them hear you. Yeah, see, Shena Odogo you want, I've been a Kenaji. Charlie, no go price me if you know if you pay. Me, I come from a place where we know they say, but you still they make up your mind. Shena Mary Kay. Yeah, see. Yeah, ice on my neck like I'm sub zero. Tell this boy, squeeze sleeping on me, no pillows. Yeah, I came from a place where we throw sticks at the old people and they tell us what we do. I book one oh four two, but you already know. Charlie, no go price me if you already go. One, two, three, four, five. Man, I'm like, tell me why all these little boys got to lie. They tell it they'll be boss, but we know the two results. The ones where they form, they go form to the fall. Uh, <laughs> I don't should I go on? No, 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 that's good, that's good, that's good. So, um, are you working on any new project or is there a song that you just put out or, you know, tell us what we should expect next from, you know, Kenna J? Yes, yes, for like since last year, till now, since I, lo I dropped my last uh, song, my last single since last year, I haven't dropped any single. So, and people have been really like asking like, what's going on, what's going on there, what, what's, uh, what's the update? So. I haven't really told people this, but I'm working on an EP. And I guess that's okay. the reason why, yeah, I guess that's the reason why I haven't dropped any song of recent. I'm working on a, a lot, of, I guess six track or a seven track EP. I'm still working on it and I haven't even told, said anything about it. This is the first time I'm saying it publicly on, about this EP. Okay. And I'm looking very hard. I'm really working around the clock, trying to make sure it's something something special because it's to be like my first uh, project, compiled project. So I'm trying to make sure it's something special and something that people will appreciate that I put uh, full effort into it. So- All right. So you guys, uh, you, 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 you had it first to exclusive news. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just, you know, mention this because I know that this, the name I sound familiar to some of you, yes. This is the same Kenaji that featured on the Chacha Anthem. So, because, yeah, because yeah. thank you for coming yeah, through yeah. on that. I really, really appreciate you know. No problem. Uh, it, was, it was really, really nice doing that with you in the studio. I mean, that was that was fun and that was yeah. that was dope. Um, yeah. let us know when the EP is done, and you know, whatever promotion that you need to be done on the EP, we are always down to do that promotion for you. This is one of the major reasons why you know we decided or I decided to you know have this series so that I can always support upcoming artists to you know put out their music in any platform that they want their music to be put to so whenever the ep is done and dusted just let us know and we'll support it to you in any way so um no before i allow you go let me just you know quickly um you know just um ask one uh you know final question something i do for the ladies because i have a lot of female fans that listen to the podcast and like I say, you can always find love mm -hmm. anywhere. You can never tell. Even on my podcast, you can find love. So mm -hmm. it's clever J, single, searching, entanglement, married, divorce, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Which one are you? Well, can I just actually single? Or I don't know if can I just search it. Can I just single? Okay. Can I just have been single for a long time? Um, okay. On the searching aspect, I don't think can I just search it because Right now, Kenaji is into a lot of things that will not give him the time to search. Something like okay. that. Okay. Okay. All right. So, any yeah. last, any last word for your fans? Yes. Um. One thing I, I like to tell people is that they should just, um, 
no matter what it is that anyone is going through, no matter what it is that you're facing, always be yourself and always stay true to what you believe in. It might not make sense to anybody, but as long as it makes sense to you and you are, you are not hurting anybody, just do it. I, that's what I keep it. People, people used to think that if, 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 if something is too hard to do, but you are doing it, why stop? Just continue. So, and also stay true to yourself, be yourself. And uh, please look out for Kenaji because I'm coming with fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah you I'm guys coming with more and more fire. Kenaji is stopping with fire. With that, I have yeah. come to the end of another episode of the Chacha Spotlight series, which is now being brought to you by Absolute Tap Media in collaboration with Homeboy Zinc. Like I said, Homeboy Zinc is an ear firm in the United States. They are into artist management, artist discovery, music distribution, and also music production. My name is Thurman Afis Donova, aka your musical plug, creator of the Energy Force. Peace out. Time to time for the cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha gang. Rocking with the best, the cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha gang. Uh, I like it like cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha gang. What's in my body, cha cha gang. Uh, give me the cha cha gang, cha cha gang.